Bigfoot science is the definition of lunatic fringe, but a creature like Bigfoot did once exist. They call it Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus would have looked almost exactly how Bigfoot is described today. Did Bigfoot exist? In a sense, yes. So I guess the real question is, does he exist today? Gigantopithecus could have stood as tall as 10 feet and is believed to have gone extinct around 100,000 years ago. By examining jawbones, it is possible to tell what kind of a diet a creature lives by. Gigantopithecus's teeth are perfect for grinding, crushing, and cutting. Their diet most likely consisted of foods similar to what pandas eat, which includes a lot of bamboo. Gigantopithecus also ate plants and berries. A microscopic examination of cavities in the teeth found remains of plants. It is likely that Gigantopithecus walked on all fours. The creature must have been incredibly heavy, and walking on all fours would allow the weight to be distributed more evenly and therefore would have made the creature easier to move. Gigantopithecus is a relative to the orangutan and is theorized to be mostly docile, only becoming aggressive when provoked. Gigantopithecus likely crossed the Bering Strait into the Americas during the last ice age. The Native Americans also crossed along with them. It makes sense now why Native Americans have over a hundred words for Bigfoot. I compare researchers in the studies of Bigfoot to the researchers who cover aliens. Researchers in both fields are very extreme in their approach. They are unwilling to consider other possibilities and only acknowledge information that fits into their own views while completely dismissing and ignoring any information that doesn't. Most of their work is often littered with confirmation bias. I must acknowledge the wackiness of these fields in general. That's not to say that each field contains no valid information. I think that they do. There is one video that many Bigfoot subscribers say must be real and proof positive of his existence. The footage is verified to be genuine and is referred to as the Patterson footage. The Patterson footage shows Bigfoot walking towards the woods. To me, Bigfoot looks like he is walking like a human, not like a primate would. You know those jumpsuits that people wear outside when they work in extreme weather conditions? To me, it looks like he is walking as if he is in one, but he clearly is not. A man in a Bigfoot suit theoretically might walk the same way. His chest and torso are massive and actually appear to have extremely large breasts. When I look at the legs, I find it incredibly hard to believe that those type of legs could support the massive amount of awkward body weight, even if they were extremely muscular. The body frame of this creature just seems to be all kinds of wacky and full of anomalies. It would seem that most sightings of Bigfoot occur in the Pacific Northwest. I wonder if that could be significant. An avid camper or someone that walks a lot of nature trails could only come across an animal skeleton maybe one out of 30 times. With the number of animals that live in the woods, how is it that we barely find remains? If Bigfoot lives in the deep woods, it is highly unlikely you will find hardcore evidence. I'm not saying that there isn't any out there. Who knows, maybe some Bigfoot prints could actually be real. Another interesting mythological creature is a lesser known abominable snowman, or the Yeti. Described as being very similar to Bigfoot with the exception that the abominable snowman lives in regions where it is cold and snowy. Everything on earth adapts to its environment. Think about brown bears and polar bears. Brown bears migrate or suddenly they are in geological changes and they find themselves in a colder and brighter environment. Some won't adapt and will die off, but some will. And over the generations, more and more bear cubs begin to come out with white fur. Until now, they all have white fur. Another example would be the Mexicans and the Native Americans. It's all the same bloodline. As we mentioned, the Native Americans crossed the Bering Strait during the Ice Age. Eventually, they would begin to spread out throughout the regions. After so long, the natives who migrated would start to develop different features based off of their new environment. It wasn't until Spanish Colonel Hernan Cortez came with his galleons and his soldiers that things started to change. Now the Spanish and the Mexicans are interbreeding. Perhaps Gigantopithecus could have evolved over the years into what we now know as Yetis and Bigfoot. Their brains might have evolved as well, and they have become smarter and more clever, clever enough to successfully evade humans. Do they know that we would most likely shoot them out of fear or lock them in cages? Does Bigfoot exist? 
I don't know.